Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to Binarithmic, the latest app from Jam All K. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe and um, because it helps uh, growing the channel. And also, if you'd like to participate in the giveaway, please do check the instruction in the video description. Okay, so what is a binarithmic? Well, it's a MIDI sequencer, but it's not a normal MIDI sequencer. It's a MIDI sequencer that um, follows or uses a binary system to actually activate steps, okay? Um, binary in terms of binary numerical system where you have only two digits, okay, zero and one. So a step can be um, either active or not active and then it moves to, and when it's been activated, it goes move to the next step and the current step is actually deactivated and it works in an incremental way so just to give you an example here you find eight different steps so the first step at the beginning will be zero so it will not play any sound then it will become one and it will play then after it has become one the first step will will go back to zero but the second step will move from zero to one okay and then it will continue to increment the first step will become one and it will play at the same time of the second step and then of course depending on the setting of the gate type which i will explain in a moment and so on and so forth and until you get up to uh, the latest number of step that you have defined before i continue let me show you the configuration in aum i have a midi channel with the midi sequencer on then I have two audio channels. On the first one, I have a grand piano, which is linked to the MIDI sequencer, and it is only receiving on channel number one, as you can see here. And then I have on the second one, ISIM. And inside that, from a configuration perspective, we have a connection again with Binarithmic, but it is receiving only on channel number two. And there is a reason for that, because the MIDI sequencer can send through different channels, which is really nice. Okay, so we are inside now binary rhythmic. So the interface is quite simple, as in many other uh, app from Gem OK, but that is actually, um, the simplicity is actually very welcome. So starting at the top here, you can have two presets, 8-bit or 4-bit, right? So, and uh, it is referencing here to the number of steps, because 8-bit would be, this number would be, of a size of eight different bit and each of the step is practically a bit you can increase the number of bits like so a step or decrease them or you can set them a number of step like so okay so you have a number of modes here the first one defines uh, the note in which uh, for each of the step that will be played so in this case c4 you can see it says c4 for all of them but you can change it so you just uh, move up and down and you change it to what um, you prefer like so okay the second one you can set the velocity for each of these different steps the third one you can set you can set the randomization for the velocity again you can change as you like from zero percent to 100 percent then you have the gate length how long the gate is open for by default is 50 percent next you have a randomization of that gate so it will change the way that the gate is open so it can make more of a longer or legato effect versus uh, uh, more of a pizzicato effect for example then you have gate type and this is quite interesting so when it is set to multi every time there is a cycle from the sequencer hitting that particular step it will play if it is uh, single it will play only once okay and uh, if it is on rest it will not play and if it is on on hold it will actually play and let the gate Sorry, it, it continues to play until the gate is actually open. And I will show you that in a second. You can also introduce um, or use logic, which is really nice. And what it means is that um, here you can set the logic between different steps. So in this case, step number two is uh, a or logic with step number five, which means it will play if either step number two or step number five are active. You can have it also on um, end. So it will play when both of them are active, are on, right? And then the last one, you have XO, which will play if the other step is not open as a gate, okay? Or it's not active. Finally, you can set um, the channel for each of the different steps. Okay, so let's continue. At the bottom here, you have patterns, as you normally do. 
from the application of um, um, from GemOK. So they can be changed through CC number 10, but you can configure that. You have one pattern at the moment, but you can add additional pattern. You can click between them to move uh, between one pattern and click and hold to copy and delete that pattern. And then if you copy the course, you can um, like so. You can go to step number two, click and hold, and you have a paste selection as well. Next, here you have a rate, the duration of the steps, okay, which you can change. Next, you have a multiplier, and the multiplier is references to the incremental nature in the way the sequencer works. So let me explain. When it will start to play, um, all the steps will be a zero, so the gates will be no, no open. It will start from the first one, and it will open it. So that means it's going to one. Because in its binary system, you are from zero to one, the next state for that step will be zero, so that will stop playing. And step number two will open, will go therefore from state number zero to state number one. The next, the next increment will be for step number one, which will go from zero and one. And depending on the gate type, it might it will play or it will go to gate open. And then you will have these two steps as one. And then and the next cycle, they both go to zero, but step number three will go to one. And that is the way to increment. Um, in a binary way. Uh, it's practically almost an accumulator. And the multiplier sets the increment by one, by two, by three, etc. And the four, you can make it faster in terms of moving towards the different uh, uh, bits or steps. You can draw as well. So let's go to pattern number two. And instead of selecting each one of them, you can draw like that, which is really nice. Okay. And then you have settings where you can change the CC number for patterns for the multiplier, which is really nice. The default MIDI in channel, the scale that you're going to use, and why not? Let's select the minor, I always prefer a minor. A key, minimum, maxi maximum, octave, and then the knob control style. Okay, so let's, um, um, let's try. Back to pattern number one and let's click play. So you can see how they increment and they move up from the left to the right in a binary way. Hopefully um, I explained that in a way that it is understood. Let's make it faster, change the rate. So let's go to 1 16th. Now, let me show you the effect of changing the gate type. For this note, uh, or step number seven here, it's quite low B2, so you can hear it, right? So let's go to a gate type, and instead of having a multi, we're going to say hold it for as long as the gate is open. And we're going to change the gate as well, length for that to be actually 100%, okay? Let's click play. You can hear that the note was sustained. Of course, that depends on the symphony that you're using or the audio source that you're using, which in this case is a piano. But let me show you now. For example, let's go to channel, and therefore that note, actually, we're going to channel number two. Okay? And um, in that channel, actually, we're going to select a a pad, actually, because that will, uh, that will be a little bit um, better in terms of, of sustaining um, that note. So let's try again. Now let me show you when I change the gate type. Instead of having multi, okay, I'm going to set them to all single apart from that one that is on hold. So let me show you the difference. So it's not playing again, as you can see, for each of the step every time the increment happens. It's 
is not playing for each cycle of the sequencer, only when it, um, the gate is actually goes to um, on, not when, for example, um, a previous bit is uh, being played or is the gate is open, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, now, let me um, show you a little bit variation. So, and let's draw the variation, like so, like that. Um, channel 2 for other notes as well like so and the type here to like so Hopefully that makes sense. Now let me show you what happens to the multiplier. When I say multiply by two, look, the increment will go faster and therefore it will move faster to the right. So it's adding by two. Okay, so it will act on the second bit. As you can see the increment. See the repetition is happening on the second bit. If I was to say four, you can guess. So it's the third bit because in a binary system you have one, two, and four to the power of two, uh, four here. Okay, and that is your multiplier for here. Okay. As I mentioned, you can use logic. So this step will play on uh, XO, but you can say play only uh, when uh, um, you are end with, uh, uh, when both steps are active. So on with step number five, and we can have this one um, play uh, and with step number three, okay? And then, then you can make all different variation or patterns in this way, which can become quite unpredictable. Okay, I hope this makes sense. As you've seen, we have been left with some uh, notes stuck there. Uh, sometimes it happens. I hope you enjoy uh, the tutorial. And as always, see you next time. Bye.